We're live. Yeah. We're live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen and kids alike, to the Out of Bounds podcast. Give you a little background. This is four brothers. One's missing today. Uh, that love football, love talking about football, uh, love it, everything about it from the the grass to you know getting put on your ass. We love the whole format of the game, and uh, we love talking about it, sharing and arguing. And laughing with each other about it and uh that's what we're here for to uh, give some insight to those who may be a less inclined to know football because we see a lot of that out there uh in the podcast and football world and they don't really understand the boundaries of football so we're going to be in that bound but we're going to go out of bounds on other topics as well so again i'm benjamin well to start i'm benjamin uh coach was what they call me I'll be the host today. I'm joined by two of my siblings, Big Ed, who's a huge Packers fan. You see mine in the back here. Uh, and also Hayes, who's a huge Packers fan. So we're going to go back and forth here. And, 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 and uh, those who don't have time and, and, and to go out there and look and see what's going on in the league, we're going to give it to you in some real short order. And, uh, and a real heavy dose. So to no further ado, we're going to keep on moving here. And we're going to go into the introductions, and we're going to start with Hayes first, please. Just a little bit about yourself, your team, uh, and about the NFL and as your team, and, and your team as a whole, rather. Sorry. Uh, what's going on? I'm Hayes. Uh, as he already stated, I'm a 49ers fan. I uh, love my boys. They get on my nerves, uh, and you fans get on my nerves sometimes as well. Um, I don't really know a whole lot to say about the team that y'all don't already see. I just hope we can get back to the Super Bowl and don't have to have to deal with the Super Bowl slump. Um, yeah, that's all I really got for for my team. No, but this ain't, yeah, this is where, so we're going to get to the team portion, but this is more or less about you. So the people that are watching oh, okay. this can understand who Hayes is. Cool, cool, cool. What okay. Hayes likes, you know, because some people are going yeah. to hate Coach, and they're going to like Hayes, and they're going to hate Hayes, and they're going to like Coach. So give us some reasons right. to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so a few things. Um I love football, obviously, which is why we're doing a sports podcast, but I love music uh, probably more than I love football. Uh, that's where the haze is. It's, that's my music name. I rap, I produce, I engineer. Um, I go by Brotherhood Haze. You can find me on all the streaming platforms. Um, uh, I'm a father. I'm a husband, hardworking man. You know what I'm saying? Love my family. I wouldn't be here without my siblings. Um, and, and this is just what we do. So we figured we might as well get into the podcast cause we, you know, we talk shit like the uh, coach already said, we talk shit about football and all different kinds of shit, but, uh, definitely football, you know, so all day, every day. Mm -hmm. All right. Great introduction. Welcome. Welcome. Hayes, everyone. And now we have, uh, last but not least big Ed. Take it from there, sir. Hey, what's going on? Whoa, man, it's here. Big head, baby in the building. You already know what it is. I'm an amateur bodybuilder. Uh, my first show is actually coming up in November. Uh, I am also an Army veteran of 12 years, infantry, OEF 1112 veteran. That's Afghanistan. Um, done a lot of ventures in my life, but uh, I'm very passionate about sports, so much so. Big Green Bay Packer tattoo on the man's arm. You already know. Now let me pause. Let me pause right there because the stream was out. We couldn't see you at all until right before you just lifted that and, and it bam. And just so that was perfect. <laughs> Go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So you know, we are we are locked in on this bodybuilder war vet. Say again. I, I was uh, leading you back into the bodybuilder war veteran. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got you. I was all, I was all for that. But uh, I, I, like my, like my uh, brother stated before, I am also a uh, husband, father of four. You know, love that life. That's an excellent job of mine. 
Because yes, parenting is the job, folks. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is what we're gonna get into, man. You can, y'all can only imagine the battles in the household when you got four brothers in the NFC. The '90s was wild. It was lit, man. We got the Packers, the Niners, the Eagles. Come on, man. You can't get no better than that. And um, form some Cowboys. good inner rivalry. Yeah, even, even though the even Cowboys though well, yeah, he's not here. here right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's basically me in a nutshell. As we progress in these episodes, you'll get to know me more. But, Fuck you know. Cowboys, but even though A-Trice. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Okay. So yeah, and and, and please yeah. and please bear with us. We have a little bit of a lag issue, I think, that's going on or something. But you know, for the most part, it's going pretty well. You'll be able to hear us, and we're going to upgrade and make sure things go smoothly today. It is a pilot, so uh, let's keep that in mind. And all constructive criticism is welcome. All negative criticism is welcome. All positive criticism is welcome. We don't care. We love it. You know, you won't get an argument for us. You can say you like, you know, dislike us, love us. We don't give a fuck. You know, we're going to keep it real, though, at all times. Okay. So now we're going to move on. We got the introductions out of the way. We're going to move on to Roman numeral one, uh, hot topics. So this is a portion where each of us are going to go into whatever. And not this is not team specific. This is just hot topics that are going on in the NFL right now. It's poignant because... We're in the free agency where we're at the coming towards the end of not the end of it, but you know, where we've had time for people to make some moves and some wiggles and some teams got some giggles. So <laughs> let's take a moment to uh, go over our hot topics from each individual viewpoint. And we're going to start with uh, big Ed and give you a couple of minutes to uh, discuss what you think is hot in the NFL right now, sir. I think the hottest, absolute hottest topic right now, and it's debatable, but it's to me, it's not, it's no question. Justin Fields going to the Steelers after they acquired Russell Wilson through trade, mm-hmm. or not even trade, mm-hmm. excuse me, Russell Wilson was cut from the Broncos. They took a huge cap hit, $89 million worth. And the Steelers acquire Russell Wilson for $1.2 million for one-year contract. But then the plot twist comes. Everybody thought Justin Fields was going to get shot to a team who needed a quarterback. But yet here we are. Pittsburgh Steelers end up with Justin Fields for fourth-round and sixth-round pick. Now, a lot of people may speculate that this is setting them up for the future. Russell Wilson only has one year to prepare and – you know, let Justin Fields really grow into the role. And I think this is excellent for Justin Fields. With a head coach like Mike Tomlin, sky's the limit for Justin Fields. He's going to be set as long as their offensive coordinator just does his uh, due justice and in, in game plans for him and implements that game plan, sky's the limit. But this right here to me is the biggest news going around in the league right now because no one's seen it coming after they saw after this Pittsburgh Steelers signed Russell Wilson. No one's seen him. Justin Fields going to the Steelers. Now there was the rumors about Justin Fields going to the Steelers. There was those rumors out there already. But with that being mm-hmm. said, those rumors kind of faded away once they signed Russell Wilson. They're like, oh, this is their quarterback of the future. But then here comes Justin Fields. So yeah, I think this is really buzzworthy news right here. I think this is one of the biggest splashes of this free agency so far because now you're looking at the Steelers having success for the future because Justin Fields is not a scrub and if we know anything we know if you paid attention last year towards the end of the season Justin Fields started heating up he started heating up and I think with that momentum man sky's the limit with him in Pittsburgh he has weapons he has weapons in Pittsburgh yeah, getting the potential of a player earlier rather than later in a season, not their career is excellent. But that also 
you know, to 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 go to your point because that is a hot topic, and I think you're right. I think that's what they're doing. I think that's the smart thing. I think Justin Fields is not something we should throw away. Like the NFL has really gotten towards throwing away quarterbacks early versus where it used to be. You know, when we watched, uh, it, it used to sit them for a year or two or three before they even got in the game. Now we put them in immediately. They have a bad season. Oh, now. They're looking for the next fucking draft pick. I'm like confused. Yeah. Like this is yeah, that's not it. So I think that's exactly what's going to happen in Pittsburgh. I think you're absolutely right. I think that was a huge move. I think it says a lot by them doing that. And um, that's a good take. That's a good uh, hot topic there. So now Hayes, uh, what do you have that's going on around in the NFL that that topic for you? Um I think Derrick Henry going to the Ravens is it's Ooh. huge, man. That's that's because you know the the Ravens was already a big deal. Um, it was uh interesting to see them not make it to the Super Bowl because I I just knew that they were the a- AFC favorite to go into the Super Bowl. But uh, mm-hmm. putting Derrick Henry with um, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson is is a big deal. Um, but now. One of the interesting things is, though, I want to see how Patrick Queen leaving is going to be uh, uh, affecting the Ravens because he's – the. I, I kept saying all year that the Ravens' defense was more mm-hmm. of an MVP than Lamar Jackson was. That was my take. The Ra- <laughs> like, when you have a number one defense, the type of defense the Ravens had all year – any quarterback is going to look good at all. You yeah, know, it makes it easy. It, makes it, it easy. makes it easy for you when you when you know that all I have to do is score really like 15 points a game. I don't have to score a whole lot of points. It makes you easy on offense, you know what I'm saying? But when your defense is giving up 20, 30 points a game, you have to put up a lot of points. So, yeah, you know, adding Derrick Henry, that's – that's going to be something big. I mean, and I think they did. They, I think they lost Odell too, so they did lose a few pieces. But Derrick Henry is a big deal going to the Ravens, a team that yeah, was already lost really Odell. good. I, I agree. I agree because look, look, <laughs> look at this. Who are you going to stop in the in the RPO? Oh yeah, Who that RPO stop? is. Oh my goodness. Who are you going to pick? You going to pick Lamar? Man. You going to pick Derrick? Which one you going to pick? You and then just screw. And then when you. When you throw in play action with that, good luck. Good luck. And so, yeah, an RPO is just really just a, a short, uh, just a shorter version of a play action. It's yeah, really, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're taking out the. So yeah, I, I agree with you. So that leads into my hot topic. I guess I can use that piggyback on your hot topic because I didn't really have one, but. Because the Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles thing wasn't a hot topic for me. Uh, we had more needs at line uh, linebacker. You cut off a little bit there. Yeah, a little yeah, frozen. frozen. <laughs> Utilize the run. We under. My bad. I believe that uh, 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 Miles Sanders, uh, no relation. Uh, was an excellent running back. I believe that DeAndre Swift was an excellent running back. Um, last year, we the whole running back room received seven million in that one year. You just paid a nigga three, four times that for one year. You know, what I mean? well, three times that for one year. So, or double, at least double. I think he might give fourteen this year. So, at least double. I think. We do have all, a different offensive and defensive coordinator this year, but I think running back was the least of our concerns. Now, moving forward, that Agreed. we did go get Devin White and did get Chauncey Gardner Johnson, the Saquon Barkley, you know, looking back, now I can smile. Now I can say, hmm, okay, we have something because to your point about that play action and that RPO, that's a lot different than Miles Sanders or DeAndre Swift because people are going to look at it. Okay, if they do hand this off, this motherfucker could just over or he could hurdle us, which we have to be there. So that's going to take away something from Smitty, from AJ, from Goddard. You understand what I mean? So, And 
a hot topic. I think that Kelsey will be compelled to come back. <laughs> I think. It, it, I think. You I, 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 think it. I think his wife. I think his wife is a, a, is is one of those women that she's a tradition. She 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 listens to her man. She does the best. She gives her uh, uh, input, and I think. She, will say you know what baby if he really believes that this and he tells her that that he believes this team has a chance to go and make it and i want to do this for philadelphia she'll let him do it and that's my no and, and see no and, and i want to piggyback off that a little bit because that was my hot topic until i talked to you and i agree with you because you said that they could have did essentially the same thing with swift but they it would they mismanage Swift. So if they mismanage Barkley, then it's it's you know it's pointless. You know what I'm saying? But Barkley, he's Christian McCaffrey on steroids. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, right? Like, no, I like you can like what can you do? That the only thing you can do to stop Barkley is not using him right and him getting injured. That's really it. That's so, it. That's it because yeah, some a, of those that's a big two deal. Goals, and three yards that we got, that, those aren't going to be two, three yards <laughs> with that guy. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not going to be. Plus, we well, we have to consider Keller Moore is coming. I have to see what I'm getting from him. You know? Yeah. You can have that. Yeah, you could have the bet Walter Payton back there, but if you're not going to run the ball, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and Keller so, Moore is past yeah. happy. So. Right. I'm well aware of being an Eagles fan. So <laughs> but I, I okay. guarantee you everyone, on. everyone in the NFC who's a fan of the NFC when they saw Saquon go to the Eagles said, fuck. I guarantee you mm. everybody thought that. Yeah. Sip and yeah, sip it's, a lot. it's a lot to cover. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when us playing it's, the it's Eagles this year. <laughs> It's a lot to cover. It's a lot to cover that running back, two great rod receivers, and you know a tight end, and you know if if Jalen's healthy, he can move around, and hopefully he can get his throwing better, you know, uh, from last year, get back to the year before, you know. But that comes with play calling too, and yeah, you know, not trying to make any excuses for him, but it, it, both of our there was no excuse for the defense or for the offense, but our coordinators suck. They suck. Yes, yeah. and that's just yeah. a lot. So yeah, that not, that makes a difference, or, or else, or else nobody would have coordinators. All right, all right, all right. Great insight there. Now we're going to move on to uh, team-related information. Although we kind of covered some of that a little bit. Um, but we have insight as fans. We have a lot of different insight. You know, I go to games. We go to games. We 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 watch the games together. We talk about this. We're in depth in our depth chart. We're in depth in the play calling. We're in depth with our coaches. So we have some insight for the casual or average fan may not have to help you become a better acclimated fan and to go to the sports bar and give your knowledge and look like you know what you're talking about, you can get that from us. You don't have to go to Skip Bayless because all he's going to do is sit there and talk about the goddamn Cowboys, Stephen A. Smith because all he's going to do is laugh about the goddamn Cowboys, and everybody else <laughs> is just going to jock ride whoever the fuck is the hot team, and then whoever just, they're going to throw him to the side and take that young quarterback and throw him in the trash, and then is anybody as good as Patrick Mahomes. And I'm tired of that shit. Yeah. And that's why we're doing this. Okay? So, now. Let's move on. And we're going to start with Big Egg. And uh, this is the hot topics. But just league-wide, what's some of your ideas and things that you have? for? Well, uh, I'll start. I'll start. League-wide. What really gets under my skin is what they're doing with all these rules changes. Oh, my God. Title rules change. I believe that over time, whether it's playoffs or regular season, be sudden death over time. You've had four quarters to score. Both of you, neither one of you could score more points than the other person. So why in overtime would I give you a chance 
to sit there and score. Now I've got a chance to sit there and score before the time runs out, even in the playoffs. That, that's just absolutely mind-numbing to me. It's mind-numbing to me, and it takes up more time. And it, and, and it puts players at risk for more injury because that's more time that you play and that you shouldn't have to play. The first good point. We've played a whole regulation game. You played a whole regulation game. Nobody could win. So now there, it's, there's no more quarters. It's overtime. Whoever scores, the game's over. That's my opinion. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe you should, even if it's a field goal, I don't believe you should get a second shot. At, then you know what? If you're up there because they won the first quarter to win the game. Right. And, and so I hope that just, just... Oh, you want me to go ahead? So the, to piggyback off of that, um, you have a defense for a reason. Yeah. yeah. If your defense yeah. doesn't show up to play, the other team wins. Because guess what? Getting the ball first, there's no foregone conclusion that you're going to win the game because of the fact that there is a defense opposing you. So if that defense does their job well, and gets their team the ball back, then they win, then they can have a chance to win the game. There shouldn't be, like you're saying, there shouldn't be this, oh, you score, I score, you score. There's none of that. Yeah. Sudden death. Whoever scores first wins. And that's why it puts pressure and not pressure on your defense. If your defense is good and your defensive coordinator is on you know, point, whoever scores it, it's not pressure. Well, well, <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. A few years ago, to a player, a coach, rather named Marty Morningwig, who was the head coach. I believe he was the head coach of the Lions, and it was an overtime. This was when sudden death was still a thing. And this dumbass decided to kick the ball and sudden another one. So this isn't like this isn't like the Super Bowl that we just watched and everybody right. I didn't understand why they everybody was saying that shit. No, because if you have a team, you had a defensive team, why not? If you have a strong defensive team, I elect to kick every time. I don't give a fuck if it's halftime person. If I win the coin toss, I'm kicking the ball. On Madden and it, whatever it is, I'm kicking the ball because I have faith in my deep. I'm a defensive minded player. I have faith in my defense. We're going to stop you at least from getting seven. You'll get three. That's it. So, but there is overtime. Marty Moore idea for field position to kick the ball. Uh, I forgot who he was doing that with, and end up losing that game. And I think that's the only coach in NFL history to ever kick the ball in sudden death overtime. And guess what? The Eagles hired that motherfucker like a year or two after that. We were in a bad, we were in a bad spot. We were in a bad spot at that time, but we're out of that spot now. This was before we won the Super Bowl. Okay, so uh, anyway, so yeah, what you got for us, uh, Hayes? There, league wide. Well, um, going with, I'm going to piggyback off that uh, the sudden death. You know. I, I, there would be a Super Bowl banner behind me if uh, if we had the <laughs> the sudden death. So, yeah. Um, well, no. Well, yeah. no. You got some, so I don't want to hear that. Well, yeah. No, I'm saying for this past, you know, the this past Super Bowl that we had. Yes, we got five, but uh, we lost three in a row. So, uh, yeah, I would much rather my team not go to the Super Bowl than go and lose. I don't like that. I, I hate. Especially losing three. I've watched them lose three Super Bowls, and uh, that doesn't feel good. I would yeah, much rather I've, them watched just three, not I've watched three Super Bowl losses. 81, yeah. 04, and 23. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, now, the, the most, for me, the hot topic in the NFL is um, – <sighs> It's a lead thing, but it also affects me as a 49er is this is Kirk Cousins. Um, I personally am glad that we didn't get Kirk Cousins, but you know, Kirk Cousins is yeah, why would y'all boy? Y'all don't need Kirk Cousins. We don't, but 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 at a time we did because we had a revolving door of horrible quarterbacks 
that Kirk Cousins was better than. Right, but y'all also didn't know what y'all had in Brock Purdy last year either. We all saw it and that thought we didn't know if it was going to be the same thing next year. That we is didn't true. know because nobody got to see him play in that conference championship. He went out in the first quarter. You know, everybody, you know, the casual fans never saw any of those six or seven games he played prior to that, and he was doing okay. Only 49ers fans and teams that he beat got to see that shit. The whole NFL yeah. didn't see it, and then they didn't get to see it that, that day. So, you know, this whole season going by, like, you know, the, the man performed well. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no need for no – yeah, there's no need for that uh, any other quarterback really, other than a solid backup. Yeah, for Brock Purdy, in my opinion, we don't have because they just got Josh Dobbs. But uh, yeah, that's a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> so well, but, I don't think there's but, any. I don't think there's a lot of good backup. Back in the league at all right now. They agree. Well, I think Ryan Tannehill is way is far greater than Josh Dobbs as far as backup. Agreed. Agreed. Agree. But my, my see my issue with uh, Kirk, and it, it, it's not even an issue. It's just I want to know how he did it. Like Kirk Cousins should get classes on scamming because how are you going to go down as? The quarterback who has the most career earnings in the NFL, and he has one playoff win for his whole career. One playoff win. He's going to end up with more earnings than Tom Brady. This man got, what, seven Super Bowls and then a 10 or some shit like that? Yeah. How, he, he how, for, how are you doing didn't this? He, didn't, didn't, didn't he play for the Redskins? That's who he got yeah. drafted by, by, by Shanahan on the Redskins. Well, yeah. Shanahan, yeah, they won. And they Shanahan, haven't, they, the Redskins haven't drafted a good quarterback in twenty plus years. Before well, no, we get, uh, they, hold on, pause, pause. Before we uh, get, get come after, yes, we know it's the Commanders. Yes, oh, I'm sorry, oh, we yeah, are aware yeah. that it changed, but uh, you I, know, yeah, I'm not a I mean, we I'm really old school. Do this, though, like. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gen <laughs> something old. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> So, yeah, the commanders, when Shanahan was on the commanders, for some reason, he he was in love with Kirk Cousins. And that's why all this talk of him getting Kirk Cousins on the 49ers, because he's the one that drafted Kirk Cousins. He wanted that man. But the one thing I will interject is that they drafted Robert Griffith as well, but they misused him. He's the reason why he, the, the, the commanders are the reason why Robert Griffith is not still in the league because they use him wrong. But that boy was going to be something special. You know what I'm saying? They use Oh, him. yeah, he was. Yeah. If he didn't get hurt, he was. Yeah. And, and that was the era of give. That's when they started slowly giving up on young quarterback. Because if you're black and then you. Yeah, you don't even get a chance, but uh, that signal is little... good. That's good because I was saying some things that probably didn't necessarily need. To but anyway, <laughs> the black quarterbacks they try to. I'm turn just gonna keep you up because you know there is a there's a different precedent. Everybody acts wants to act like oh no, there was... I come from the era of watching when certain quarterbacks were considered dumb, weren't allowed to be quarterbacks and call audibles and run plays or be coaches or any of that stuff. So that's where I was at at that moment. So, you know. So I, but I want to say it. I want to say two things that goes to what you're saying that you is undeniable. Michael Robinson right now when you pull him up, mm -hmm. he's listed as a fullback. He was a starting mm -hmm. quarterback for Penn State for Three years, I think, and ended up coming to the league mm -hmm. playing fucking fullback. Charlie Ward mm -hmm. won a national oh, title and a Heisman yep. and had to play point guard in the NFL because he didn't get drafted. In the NBA, so, so, so yeah, the the NBA, Charlie Ward yeah. thing, boot camp, I was in boot camp when that game was being played. I don't even watch college ball, and but every, you know, it's, it's all brothers in there, so everybody's watching, you know what I'm saying, national championship game 
all that. Charlie Ward, I'm watching this guy. I'm like, who is this quarterback for Florida State? This guy just doing all this kind of stuff, amazing throws, running around. He's kind of short, you know what I'm saying, and running around, throwing passes everywhere. When is the game? Oh, okay, so he's not kind of short. Okay, just maybe <laughs> look like it on the field. Well, they're looking at them, oh, them 1993 TV, okay? So when it comes time for the draft and everything going on, I'm like, hold up, hold up. This kid didn't get drafted? The one that was in the national championship that played for Florida State that was the quarterback didn't get drafted. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm looking at it like, oh, wow, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. Well, no, this, I didn't see the draft. What happened was he ended up on the Knicks, mm -hmm. and he was playing when he was his rookie year. And he Ward, and I'd be like, Charlie Ward, you know, Court State. And I'm like, how does this make – does this make sense to anybody that's watching this? Nobody does questions. Anybody, so he's good enough to be a point guard in the NBA, but not good enough to be a quarterback in the NFL, and he just won a national championship as a quarterback for Florida – Bobby Bowden, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, at that time. Florida right. State. Bobby Bowden. And he won the Heisman. That shit is crazy. You will never see anything like that ever again. <laughs> Insane. Insane. Yeah, I remember that. I remember it because I don't even watch college ball. Y'all know that. I don't watch college ball. But, you know, all the brothers was in there. And uh, this was – so I was out of boot camp. This was boot camp. I was in – I wasn't in AIT school, but I was waiting for orders to go to my house. And so I was in a birthing unit with people that were going to school. So I, I wasn't doing anything, but I was in there, and they were watching it, and I went in there. So, yeah, so I, okay, all right. Let's leave why. I, uh, I have this pulled up, and I, I just want to say this. This is his yeah, accolades yeah. from that year. Charlie Ward, ACC, ACC Player of the Year, ACC Male Athlete of the Year, ACC Austin Pinson Player of the Year, uh, SN Player of the Year. I don't know what SN is. Unanimous All American, Chick Harley Award, James E. Sullivan Award, Davey O'Brien Award, Johnny United's Golden Arm Award, Walter Camp Award, Maxwell Award, Heisman Trophy National Championship. All in the same year, and he doesn't get drafted. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a meanwhile that's Johnny broke. Manziel can go in Johnny the first Manziel. round. <laughs> and Baker Mayfield, what was he? A second round, first, second, second. I'm pretty sure he was a first was round. Second. I think he might have been a second. I think he might have been an early second, but either way, it doesn't matter. He got drafted. All these guys. Crazy, insane, what they did to Charlie Ward. So shout out to Charlie Ward in the 90s, old school football. Yeah, I'll let you know uh, that we know what we're talking about here. When we say it, it's not just a podcast to get on here. But this is what we do. This is what we love. This was genuine. This was organic. We didn't have anything in particular to talk about Charlie Ward. It just came up. So, you know, when we're doing this and we're going live and you have questions and, and, or if you, you know, had just have topics, we're going to indulge in that too. They're fully interactive, and uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, so now we're going to move into a segment of this episode. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Baker Mayfield was the first overall pick in 2018. Yeah, that's what I, 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 I knew him and Manzan are both. I, well, yeah, that's uh, – I was trying to get myself to bend this out, but – Okay. <laughs> So now we're going to go to the out of bounds segment of the podcast where each of us, uh, and Alex is out of bounds, or excuse me, Atrax is out of bounds for not being here today. But he's a Cowboys <laughs> fan. And Cowboys don't show up when it's they most important. Up. So uh, that's so we're going to go with that trend today. And we're going to skip over that. Uh, out of bounds. I'll start the out of bounds podcast since I mentioned the Cowboys. I'm going to continue with the Cowboys um, or the Cowboys family. Um, and this will be the last of that. This is the pilot episode, so I'm not. This is not going to be a cowboy Cowboys bashing episode. It's not going to be like between. Oh, he's an Eagles fan. All he does. 
But this is way out of bounds. So I'm going to speak on it today. Tad Prescott. Younger brother of Dak <laughs> Prescott. <laughs> has some interesting things to say about Jalen Hurts. So he was being questioned about his top 10 QBs. Left Jalen Hurts off the list of top 10 QBs, which I have no problem with. Because last year, to be honest, Jalen Hurts played at about 15 or 16, if you want to rank him. His play was off. It was poor, regardless of who was calling the plays or what the reason was. It was poor. Uh, so I don't have an issue with you leaving him off the list. But when he went to his list and Joe Flacco was 10, and I don't have any issue with Joe Flacco, but Joe Flacco was the 10th. And, and no, so he got to like eight or nine, I think. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. And the person asked him, well, what about Jalen Hurts? Well, he had Mahomes first, Dak second, you know, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, all these guys in here. And then somebody said, well, what about Jalen Hurts? And he said, Jalen Hurts, he said, you said, two quarterback, not running back. Oh, wow. Um, so you could put Flacco at 10. Mind you, mind you, not Lamar Jackson. And Josh Allen last year, stats were very comparable rushing to Jalen Hurts. Matter of fact, some one of them had way more mm -hmm. attempts in rush. Jalen Hurts mm -hmm. comes from the tush push. Neither one of them run a tush push. So you, the boys that you love so much all had Josh Allen, his rushing and it's touch I don't think people really paid attention to that. When we were up in Josh Allen and all that man had more rushing touchdowns in the middle of the season than Jalen Hurts had, which is not a bad thing to me. I'm not one to bash quarterback second run. You need that escapability. You need that second level from a quarterback play. Okay. But to put two quarterbacks on your list that had more rushing yards and more rushing touchdowns than Jalen Hurts. Okay, and then to say you said quarterback not running in the year prior to that, he had way more passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns, higher percentage probably than Dak, and Dak's never been to a conference championship or a goddamn Super Bowl. Not even close. Neither one. Neither one. Jalen Hurts has been in the league half the time. Your brother has been in the league. But found his way to the Super Bowl. So you're way out of bounds, Tad Prescott. And this is the other thing I have to say, and I'll leave that alone. Once I said, I said, okay, Tad Prescott, let me look this guy up. Because he played college ball. All three of the brothers, from what I see, played at Northwestern State University in Louisiana, right? Dak Prescott has stats at Northwestern State. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Northwestern State University in Louisiana. Now, their older brother, Jace, has stats recorded. Was an offensive lineman or fullback. Looks like he switched between. And had outstanding numbers. A rating of 75. Well, his first year, he was red-shirted. Second year, had outstanding rating on his protection, 80%. You know, no. in the second year, he got hurt in the uh, uh, – so his third year, he got hurt in the first game of the season. Season ending injury. Stats recorded for this. Those are that man for being a football player. Way better than Dak. He was a 6'6". six, he was a big guy. Dax, of course, we know they're gonna have his shit all over there. So apparently Tad played tight end at Northwestern State University in Leo in Louisiana. But Northwestern State University in Louisiana doesn't recognize Tad Interesting. at all. Interesting. Because I've searched Google, I've searched Northwestern State University everywhere for his stats at end. And I found zero. Not one. A single catch, drop, snap, nothing. 
So, Tad Prescott, you are out of bounds. You need to shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. You're letting your emotions go. I'm an emotional person. Right, listen, I'm an Eagles fan. You see that behind me right there? I love this. But I'm not going to let my mouth get me into a situation that I be just because of the love. And what you said was dumb. You need to apologize to Jalen Hurts, which you're not going to do because you're not man enough to do that. I know that. Okay, I know that. But please don't dis disrespect that man that's making – 200 and something million dollars <laughs> still playing quarterback while you were a tight end and you're sitting on your brother's couch tweeting about the man that's making 200 and something million dollars. I got to say, ain't about the money, but he has stats. We can go look at Jalen Hurts' stats in college. We can see what Jalen Hurts. And for the season, just to back what you're saying, Jalen Hurts. Tight end, Tad Preston, Tad Prescott. Jalen Hurts had 600 rushing yards mm -hmm. this year. Josh Allen mm -hmm. had 500-something rushing yards. Lamar mm -hmm. Jackson had 800 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. So just to prove what you're saying so nobody is confused. <laughs> Can I go? Can I go? It's my turn. It's my oh, yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. I'm out. I'm out. You know who's well. Out of bounds. I'm talking about out of there. Aaron Jones. Oh, baby. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, baby. You ended up going to the Vikings for $1 million more than what the Packers were going to offer you just for your ego. You're way out of bounds, Aaron Jones. I love the eight years that you gave us, man. I love it. I appreciate it. You truly were the embodiment of a Green Bay pack. But you better look at the history of those Packers who went to the Vikings. The only one who had success was Brett Favre. You better look at the history. Look who your quarterback is. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Oh you my left God. a rising Jordan Luck for Sam Darnold. Good luck, Aaron Jones. You got to see us twice a year, buddy. You're way out of bounds. We sacked Sam Donald. We sacked Sam Donald nine times, and I called it before that game. And to this man right here, Big Ed, text him before the game while I was sitting in the fourth row. Yeah, FedEx Field. I remember it. Going, no, it was Carson. Not, it was Carson Wentz. I'm sorry. It was Carson yeah, Carson Wentz. Wentz. Yeah, it wasn't Sam Donald. But yeah, we, no, we're going to no. stay on Sam oh, Donald. He's not a good quarterback. But the, the, the point is, Aaron Jones could have decided to go anywhere in the NFL. But the day, the same day that the Packers decided to move on from him, he signs with the Vikings, which lets me know that his agent has been in contact with the Vikings all along. Somebody. He was already making that power play. He could have went to the AFC. He could have went anywhere else in the NFC, but he chose the Vikings. And for that, sir, you are out of bounds. You're way out of there. Get him out of here. I, I let you go, Hayes, because I'm done. I could be here all day talking about Aaron Jones and his treachery. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to make a habit of this. But my out of bounds is for something that happened off the field. And uh, and I think it needs to be jerk because I haven't heard anybody talk about this. Do mm -hmm. we not realize that Cam Sutton is on the run from the police? An active NFL player is on the run from the police? Does anybody not know that? I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't yeah. heard it either. <laughs> so this man has a domestic violence charge. And got the fuck up out of that. They've been looking at for him for like three weeks. He's gone. Nobody knows where the fuck this man is at. Cornerback <laughs> for the Detroit. Well, well, he was a cornerback for the Detroit Lions, but they released him <laughs> after this shit came out. So he's been yeah, on yeah. the run for like three weeks. And I haven't heard anybody talking about that. Like that's that's out mm -hmm. of bounds, bro. Like, how are, are, are did you not watch Ray Caruth, my boy? Like, what what are we doing right now? <laughs> How are you? 
How are you an active NFL player on the run from the police? Yeah, that's 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 wild to me. So yeah. hey, like man. I said, I'm not money. Don't, I'm not gonna make money. Doesn't make, money doesn't make people smart. We learn that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. It just it just you know. Money and how you can have all the money and the opportunity in the world, but a dumb motherfucker still this this is my favorite saying. A smart person can play dumb all day, every day. I can play dumb, you know, is it I can act like I don't know what's going on, but a dumb person can never play smart. Sure. He can't play smart. For sure. It's gonna come out. As soon as you open your mouth, everybody's gonna know you're dumb. So wow, that's unfortunate. Hopefully. That rectifies itself. I don't know how, but <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, speaking of which, uh, since we do out of bounds, and we got a couple minutes, and we're going to go out of bounds, which is off the field and out of the lines. Andy Reid, I love you. Not as much as I love Dougie Peterson. You need to get your kids together. <laughs> no, I got two did. sons, Andy Reid. No, he did yeah, go to Andy Reid. Hold, <laughs> hold on, man. Look. Hey, right, look. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds, dog. I got two sons. I love them. I ain't going to say. You know, it's, but there's a difference between the two. Okay? Oh, you can't, there's, there's, there's something different, and you have to know the difference in your children. I'm not saying one's better than the other or you love one more than I'm just the difference. Your sons have been causing havoc since you've been in the NFL. Now, I'm not going to speak on, you know, the ones that pass or any of that other stuff. What happened in the past is the past, and one is not here to defend himself. However, after y'all won that Super Bowl, Okay, and your son decided to do what he did and injure other people. Just like every even Jordan Davis a bad way to go because of what happened after the Georgia Bowl, which he wasn't even participating. He was participating in this racing and the speeding. But he didn't nobody in his vehicle pass or he didn't cause the pass. Well, Andy Reid's son's story is a little different. And this isn't the first time that you've been around death or overdoses or crime or being a criminal attached to you in any city you've been in. So that happens, you know, and, and I don't want to bring any trauma to the people who were there that day and, and, and there's children involved, if, if you understand what I mean. They're, they're very young. So he's sentenced three or four years, something to that fact. Do you know, so this, this is who's out of bounds, honestly. It's this, I believe it would be the governor of that state that pardoned Andy Reid's son after he's only done a year of that sentence has pardoned him and opened up the gates and let him go. Way out of let bounds. Let him go. Yeah, that's... Not after this Super Bowl, not this Super Bowl that just happened. Not, this ain't the one where the shooting happened. This not. This was when they beat the Eagles. You understand what I'm saying? And he just got released a few weeks, if not a couple months ago. So, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. What, the police wrong? Because we've been saying that for years, and we don't. Right. But, again, I digress. Yeah, exactly. I got I just, one. Hey, you know, that's bad business. I got one more out of bounds. NFL execs, man. Ownership and all that. You know what I'm going with this? The Denver Broncos, right? Oh, so, man. Listen, man. listen, 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 listen. This is not just an uh, indictment on the Denver Broncos organization because we know it happens all across the NFL. But this is just really opening, should open players' eyes to the fact that these organizations got way more money than people think that they got. Because if you're willing to take an $89 million cap hit off of releasing a player, then I don't want to hear no more that you don't have the money to pay a play. Now, you're, you're willing to take $89 million in a hole. 
Explain that for the people who don't understand what that means. Explain that for people that don't understand what that means. So the biggest thing that's going on here is, in fact, now they are $89 million in debt. That's how you that's how you should look at it. Because they owe this money to Russell Wilson now, regardless of what he does. They're paying him this year. They're Meaning paying him. You're <laughs> paying a player that's not even on your team anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that's mm -hmm. that's that shows you if they're willing to take an $89 million cap hit to cut a player that they don't like or they don't want to move forward with anymore, then when you go into those negotiations as a player, you should never, ever say, I'm going to go ahead and take one for the team because I'm being loyal to the team. Because those teams don't have any loyalty towards you whatsoever, yeah, whatsoever. at all. None of, those, none of those organizations have loyalty to you as a player. Because they're not willing to pay you what you are worth. That's and it's that. shown, this is just the most egregious one in recent history. But it's, it's, it's happened. It's happened across the past 10 years. But this is very egregious. To where you're that rich, to where you could just say, eh, and what's $89 million? Who cares? <laughs> That's way out of bounds. Denver Broncos organization, you're out of bounds. Sean Payton. You're extremely out of bounds. Yeah. He came in there like he was dang on Saddam Hussein or something, man. Straight dictator mode, bro. He didn't want to work with anything, which led the organization to say, you know what? We're just going to cut Russell Wilson. Who cares? What? Yeah, and he should have never, he should have never, he should have never, ever, ever spoke to Russell Wilson like that on the sideline. On the, oh, That's my God. There's oh. players you can and can't do things with. There's players that you should and shouldn't do things with. Russell Wilson is one of those. That's not a player that you need to speak to like that on the sideline or, or have to get into because he's he's one of those guys that's going to put his head down. He's a company man. You don't embarrass company men. You understand yeah. what I'm Super saying? Super Bowl winning quarterback. You, you don't do yeah. I don't care what – yeah, exactly. I don't care what the situation is. Somebody that's a company man is putting the company on his back and is going to work that hard, you don't put them in a position where you're questioning them in front of motherfuckers who's not giving that he, effort. He would have never done Drew Brees like that. Ever no, done Drew Brees no, like that. No, no. So why would you – because they're very comparable. You would never do – you. It, why would you do that to Russell Wilson? And and that's that's that show, and especially the year that Russell Wilson had last year. Let's be real. Right. That yeah, was that's a phenomenal not act like season. He was playing terrible. And, and, yeah, he and they're a, trying to. Man. Year, he had a year comparable to what Jalen Hurts had the year prior to last. Right. But those numbers were good numbers. Excellent they were numbers. Good numbers. That's what those were the same type of numbers he was putting up when they when the Seahawks were good. But they try to make you think. That he had a bad year last year, and that's not the truth. Definitely did not have a bad year last year. And he might have had a slow. He might have had a slow start, but he didn't have a bad year. For sure. But no better QB should have gone through that, but I'm I'm happy that he landed in Pittsburgh because I believe that's a, a beautiful situation man. for him. And on top of that, mm -hmm. hey, he's still getting that check, baby. They say he's still getting that coin. <laughs> Russell Wilson laughing to the base. I have all the money to take Sierra yeah, yeah. on all the dates. He's taking Sierra on all the fancy trips. He ain't worried about this. And he, that boy got 38 got M &Ms coming in that big account, boy. <laughs> and, and he's got a coach that's going to listen to him. That's right. Respect him. A coach that if he need be, he's going to adjust the game plan to whatever he does best. He's going to make sure that he's. Listen, to Tomlin is, in my opinion, a coach that's going to do whatever it takes to win. So if I don't have a quarterback and I got to run the ball 50 times, it'll be that. If I don't have a running yeah. back and I got to throw the ball 50 times, it'll be that. And he's going to draw stuff up that and find out what uh, uh, Russell is comfortable with. And they're going to do a lot of that. And then he's going to test the waters too. Mm -hmm. And he might throw a couple trick plays in there, and you don't think Russell can't run no more, and he might run an option, or you know what I'm saying? I I, I think there's yeah. some good things to come, and some good things to see from uh, the Steelers over there. So that's a good thing because they they went to the playoffs with pretty poor quarterback play last year. Oh yeah, so Most definitely. I mean it could only go up from there.
But I think Russell Wilson deserves a whole lot of credit because of what a lot of people don't understand about the contract situation and why he ended up getting released is they wanted him to restructure his contract to take away yep. the injury clause to where if you right, right, right. don't and, get played. And he said, yeah. fuck no. Yeah, you already now, signed the contract, dog. No trade, no <laughs> net. Yeah. You already signed the contract. The interesting the contract- thing about- Go ahead, go ahead. Well, the interesting thing about that is, is that this is the same shit I kept trying to tell people about Kaepernick, and nobody paid attention to that. The year that everybody kept saying, Kaepernick got benched for Blaine Gabbert. That's not what happened. They told Kaepernick, you're not playing until you restructure your contract and get rid of the no injury cause. And he sat on the bench until he finally budged and said, okay, I'm restructuring my contract. He restructured his contract, then they started playing him. That's what happened. And nobody un- nobody pays attention to that, and they don't bat an eye. He didn't get bitched for Blaine Gabbard. They wouldn't play him because he wouldn't restructure his contract. And when he restructured him, then he started playing. Russell Wilson said, fuck that. I'm not restructuring my shit. And yeah, I salute him for that. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, because the business is going to keep businessing. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not taking any cuts for players. They're going to act like, oh, for the fans, and it's a bunch of bullshit. It's all about money. So, you know, but we just have a love for the game. So we hope to see our favorite players there playing. Yeah. But you know. so we're coming by to the end. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, no, no I was just going to say, just like Eric Armstead leaving the 49ers, a lot of 49ers fans was upset. But – they told him he needed to pick the take a pay cut. He said no. Jacksonville gave him the money he wanted, so he went. It's just that simple. It's business. And, and who are you talking about? Because you broke up a little bit. I didn't hear who you were talking about. Eric Armstead. Said Jackson, out, uh, defensive oh, tackle. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Defensive player. Yeah, they yeah I mean, you know, pay cut. Jacksonville gave him the money. So. Right. 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 Yeah, same thing with Chauncey Gardner Johnson. I think we realized we made a huge mistake with that last year, and they brought him back this year. So, you know, they offered him uh, what they could. So, right now, this is, you know, we're going to set this up again. It's a trial run, it's a pilot. Not a trial run because we're going to keep on running it whether you try or not, whether you come or not. This is going to be going on. Whether you're here or not, this is going to be going on. So, if you want to be a part of some really, really, really great football talk, some brotherly love, uh, some representation of the NFL, you know, around the globe. Uh, just join the Bounds podcast. We're going to talk about things in bounds. We're going to talk about things out of bounds, but it's all going to be love. It might be a little banner. It might be some arguments, you know, but that's what football is all about. What they do Comment, on the field, like, we're subscribe. Do right Comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely. Comment, like, subscribe. So if you guys share, share it with your loved ones, share it with your boys, share it at the barbershop, share it at the hair salon. Share it at the gym. Right. Share it when you go swimming. <laughs> share it when you play basketball pickup at the street corner. Y'all, you know I'm talking about. Hey, share that thing everywhere. Right. You feel me? Share it with everyone. Right. You can share it with on these digital airways. It don't take you no time. It don't take you no pressure. It don't take you nothing. Go ahead and share that thing, man. What y'all talking about? They got Facebook. You got Instagram. You got Snapchat. You got Twitter. Or excuse me, X. You got all of them. Go ahead. Blow that thing up and share it. Ain't gonna take you no time. Just do it. What you talking about? Y'all stupid. Go ahead and get with it. You better get with it before you get left behind. I don't know what y'all doing. Come on now. Way behind. Way behind. <laughs> so and then and, you know, and we want construction criticism. We want feedback. This is new to us. You know, we're not doing this to monetize or or any of that sort. This is strictly for the love, and we want to do it with people that we love and people that love this. So if you have construction constructive criticism and feedback that you want to get. Even if you just comment, let's, let's start low. Just comment something first, you know, just, just hit a like button and then leave a comment. If we see the same amount of likes and comments, then we're going to incorporate what, what you say and what you're doing anyway. It doesn't really matter, but we just want to see you hit that comment button. See that like button, that subscribe or that share button, because I don't think there's anything to subscribe to yet. Uh, but the, or it might be, it might be. And then just uh, subscribe, share, and enjoy the content. You know, we'll make some shorts. We'll do all that good stuff. And football season is rapidly approaching. 
Uh, so, you know, we're going to have more and more content as the days go by. You know, fly, Eagles, fly. Go, Pat, go. Uh, what did the Niners say? I don't go, see. Rush. <laughs> bang, bang, Niners game. <laughs> what'd you say? What, what'd you say, Dorsey? Bang, bang, Niners game. Bang, bang, Niners game. Fuck the Cowboys because they're not here. They can't speak. So, you let you get your ass in. This is to watch this shit and get your ass in. Okay, so we can really talk. Uh, but this has been the Out of Bounds podcast. That is our time. It's been an hour. We appreciate you for coming and watching us. Uh, we love each other. We love y'all. We love the comments. We love everything coming in, good or bad or indifferent. It doesn't really matter to us. Just tune in for the Out of Bounds podcast. We'll have more great NFL content, more sports content, and more just, you know, talk between brothers. All right? I want y'all to have a blessed day. And uh, go Birds. Go Pack. Bang, bang, Niners gang. Peace out, y'all. Out of bounds. We out. Thanks. Now, if I can figure out how to cut the motherfucker off, that was. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was coming, baby. <laughs> hey, we ain't left just yet. Hey, just wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>